giving signs. Yeah, very soon. <laughs> On that lady's point, I'd like, in terms of education, I would urge any person here that's got an hour free during the week to offer a club to your local school. Extended services is where it's at at the moment. Go and teach food growing or wood carving. On a practical note, ask me what, ask me what we can do. Set up a transition kids club. Um, so that's where it's at. There's so much we can do with the schools at the moment, but in the auspices of extended learning. Um, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to ask a question, but just on the education, it is by far the most important single issue because our kids will save us because we are also conditioned. Um, the future is the kids, so education is the the number one um, issue and how to approach the next generation. Um, my question is, I think personal resilience is um, primary because we are a community of individuals and. What I'd ask, like to ask Claire is what practical steps, like what practical things can we take away from this? Even ask all you guys this, like what can we do? I, I agree with this lady over here, I think she just wants action. Um, I think these meetings are essential to come together, to be inspired, but then also for you guys to tell us what can we do practically when we leave here today to integrate what we're, we're hearing from you and this energy and this inspiration and take it and use it and what can we do? So, yeah, that's an that's, uh, issue. And one last thing I'd like to say. Um, I'm an ex-banker. I used to work for the devil. Um, I used to work in Wall Street. Um, I'm a financial, an ex-financial expert. I had a team of traders under me. I was responsible for, I wouldn't say creating, but billions and billions of dollars of wealth. And I think there is a crash coming um, much sooner than people think on a financial level, there is going to be a, like a financial meltdown. It's like a tsunami is coming, and a couple of people are just waving little flags on the shore. Uh, tsunami, and everyone is just in this kind of glaze. And when I mention this to people, that it's coming in the next, so a lot sooner than people think. Like a lot sooner, like. I think people think quite soon. Yeah, I think everyone in this room is on, on with me on this vibe. But it's coming really soon, like tsunami. Um, so basically, it's really about getting skilled up and practical and really coming away and taking practical steps. So um, I'll take two questions and then we'll get back to the panel. I just want to say, it, it, I, I, kind of disagree. I, I agree, yes, we need to go into schools and we need to do training in schools. I totally disagree that our children are going to save us. That's so unfair and they won't have time. It's up to us to get the skills, to get the practical stuff. I'm teaching adults this practical stuff and it's actually up to us to get these skills and then we can pass that on to our kids. What a burden on young people. <laughs> what a burden. <laughs> sort it out, kids. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, I'd just, just like to say something. I think there's a lot of really interesting and valid points, but we kind of drifted somewhat from the, the core topic of resilience. You know, there's a lot of points which are kind of like, again, addressing this idea of transition. And I'd just like to make that discernment that, you know, resilience is a non-ideological thing. And also that it doesn't have a time scale. So, you know, being prepared now is the only place to be prepared in. And it's really important to, like, make those differentiations. I mean, I think that certainly the transition movement can look at resilience. But the resilience movement is, is, a, is a, a different container. And it has a different conversation that's happening in it. Um, I first of all just wanted to go back to the question about education. Um, for me, I think um, it's so important coming back again to the whole nature connection thing. I think we desperately need to expose young people to that at such an early age because for me, I think one of the biggest challenges we face is that the human condition has shifted so much because of our relationship with nature. If you go back to pre-agriculture, before we actually discovered agriculture and realized that we could actually you know, manipulate food and, and actually grow it, um, you know, we lived as hunter-gatherers, and the way that we related to nature was completely different, that we saw ourselves as completely equal to all other beings. Um, it didn't even occur to us, you know, that, that we could have power over nature. And, and if you look at what we're doing now to, to, to the, you know, the, the planet that we live in, then, then this is a complete product of, of that, of that shift, of that conceptualization within the human condition, that we have, can have power over nature. So for me, it's so important that 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 um, nature connection gets brought back in at a very early age because it's so hard to shift that. You know, we, the human condition 
it, we're not, we can't shift it in a personal lifetime. This, we're talking about a long time, um, and that's a big cultural shift. So I feel like nature connection in schools is absolutely essential, and it's something that I, you know, really grieve that I haven't had that exposure in the way, you know, in the way that children still can. Um, and then where, there was the question about what, um, how can we take this out? You know, what, what, what do you guys do now? Where do you go with this information if you want to do something? Um, I'd say that I'd be really surprised if in any community there wasn't already something happening that related to this. Whether, you know, whether it's got a transition banner attached to it or not, there'll be something that's about supporting your community to, to transform itself in some way, um, no matter how small, big or small that is. So just put your feelers out there and find out what's already happening. I mean, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And I think the first stage of, of bringing about any change and contributing to anything is really find out what's already going on and speak to them and, and then just build on that. Either help them you know, develop their project or it might inspire you to do something else. But I think, you know, the more we can be working together and, and finding out what's already happening and then building on that, the better. But it is, there is so much happening. It's just about, you know, finding out, talking to people to find out what is happening. Yeah. Yeah, just on that education theme before we perhaps we move off that, um, the film we showed the other night, just to repeat, schoolingtheworld.org, highly recommend that. will really open your eyes about the educational system that we've designed for the last 200 years to really, um, really, well, the subtitle is, if you wanted to change a... a um, uh, society in one generation, what would you do? You would educate the, the children, and um, it's been overtly to destroy connection and connectedness. Um, I was just going to say, I, I keep I have this sitting here with this mental picture from Monty Python of the guy playing the keyboard. I keep you know, somewhere like rising up out of the floor with no clothes on playing a keyboard. <laughs> That probably tells more about me than about anything else. Rob's trying to make it fun now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, could I say something about, about a point that's been raised? Um, and um, somebody over here said, you know, how do we get this out wider? And there's always this feeling that, you know, we're just talking to each other and we're not talking to um, all those other people out there. And I remember once at, at, at a conference uh, there was a woman there who said, you know, we, God, we've got all these nihilistic young men in our, in our town, you know, who, how on earth am I going to communicate with them? Because the answer was, you're not. You know, I mean, d don't go to the most difficult people first. Leave them for later. <laughs> go to the people that are likely to respond. Yeah. Yeah. And then work out from that. So you're going to be going to you know, the usual suspects, to the middle class, educated, blah, 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 whatever they are, people. And you're going to feel, oh my God, you know, this is, this is so incestuous. But actually, that's the only way to do it. Start you're, with yourself. Yeah, yeah, you start with yourself and, and you move out in a way, it's very much like gardening. You know, if I could take another analogy with the earth. Please do. Well, one of my favourite... Perhaps, well, one of the most valuable pieces of advice that I think that I have for people who are starting out in gardening is start small. Three metres by three metres is the maximum in your first year of gardening. Because if you make it as small as that, you're likely to make it successful. And then if having done that for one year, you think, oh, I think I can manage a little bit more. You make it three by four. Or you might even make it three by six. But whatever... And that way, you learn to be a successful gardener rather than a headless chicken gardener who's always running around all the time saying, oh, my God, I'm not keeping up with this. Oh, oh no, it's terrible. Look, that's not doing, that's not doing. Keep it simple. Make it easy for yourself. And it's just the same with spreading the word about something. You know, I mean, I, that's what I... I make a living out of preaching to the converted. <laughs> Do I think it's a waste of time? No, because there's a ripple effect. And it goes out. And, and all those people... But on the other hand... I would say, don't be too afraid of talking to people. You know that thing where you think, oh, I better not mention anything about the green stuff that I'm really into because they'll think I'm funny. And, so, and you tone it down. But if you actually take the plunge and you mention something, people say, oh, yeah, I've always thought that as well. You're dead right, you know. So don't be afraid. But don't immediately go to sort of like the, the guy standing on the corner of the street and looks at you trying to sell you heroin. <laughs> <laughs> So that was you, you kind of started with which one of the questions was uh, over there, which was um, what, what can we do practically to integrate what we've been hearing at this uh, conference? I think that was probably yeah. you were answering that question. So uh, could, could I, can I say something there? Yeah. Just a couple of kind of take-home practical things about resilience. Um, 
get prepared. You know, on a personal level, that can include putting together an emergency preparedness kit, having things like a personal water filter, a fire starter, really basic things. Uh, and then the most important thing that you can do is to reach out to your, to your community and to like-minded people and explain, uh, you know, whatever it is that is motivating you to have that resiliency conversation. And the key thing to do in that dialogue is community resource mapping. So if you can do that in your, your, your immediate sphere, that's basically the, the most empowering thing that you can do if you want two simple action things, personal preparedness and then community resource mapping. Is that the question? What, yeah. could, what would you do when you go home? Yeah. Um, uh, get rid of your telly. <laughs> because I think, particularly if you've got kids, because I think it's so hard to try and reduce the impact of a family, uh, the, the, the footprint of a family, when there's constantly the messages coming in going, ah, but you're not actually as happy as you thought you were, are you? Because you haven't got one of these. Uh, and that's, that's really useful. Uh, and I think learning to grow, just starting to grow something. And learn about how, how you use energy get one of those little energy meters they're brilliant you realize where where the things are where you're making an impact a few things. just to add to that i and really responding to the comment about making it fun um i think that that as much as yeah really important to go out and do these individual things but you know, finding other people in your community have got that enthusiasm as well that are already doing stuff is so important because we do absolutely have to make it fun because we're not going to persuade people to do it unless it's bringing a positive effect into their life and, you know, and generating that fun. So, yeah, I mean, I said it before, but I just think go out and find out, you know, what other people are doing and don't, don't be a lone wolf, do you know what I mean? Like, we've got, we've, we've got to be in this together and find other people to really, you know, make it... In. I mean, you look around site and you look at the people that are doing loads of practical examples of, of the things that we're wanting to be, you know, increasing in society and they're all having a great time doing it, you know, so we need to get out there in everyday life and just be really enjoying this.